Well, hey, everybody, and welcome to the Module 1 mini lecture for this kind of our first kickoff module in this, the Substance Related and Addictive Disorders class. Again, I just want to welcome you to class and uh, say a couple of words of introduction and announcement here, and then we're going to get talking about a couple of things um, out of our module. Uh, so this little, this little mini lecture video is something that I will do at the beginning of every module, just really to kind of summarize the key points and the high points of what is contained in your lecture notes. So with every single module, um, there's going to be a little lecture video license at the front, and then there's going to be several of my pages of lecture notes for you to go through and read. There might be some handouts, there might be some web pages I've loaded that I want you to look at. And then there's always a discussion question and then a homework assignment at the end of every module. And the discussion question, the homework assignment is what you have to do for a grade. So there is a module one discussion question and a module one um, homework assignment for you to be working on. Normally those are due at 12 o'clock noon. There's our key magic time again on Monday, 12 o'clock noon on Monday. But because this weekend at the end of this module is Labor Day weekend, I'm going to give you an extra day. So instead of it, instead of your work being done, the discussion question and the homework assignment being done by 12 noon on Monday, I'm going to give you until Tuesday the 8th. But normally it's on Monday, right? And so this class, we have 11 different modules. Three of those modules are kind of more general. These first two modules and then the very one at the, the one at the very, very end are really more kind of general information. And the bulk of the class really is where we're going to take a week and we're going to talk about these individual uh, substance classes like alcohol and tobacco and marijuana. And we're going to sit with some individual modules on each of these individual drug classes. That's one of the main purpose of this class is to make sure that you just have that basic information about all these different drug classes. And again, a lot of this information is going to be review for most of you, but some of it may be new as well too. And so the first couple of modules are kind of by way of introduction. Uh, this first module is called Substance Use Overview. And what we want to do is just for the first couple of weeks, kind of just lay some foundational groundwork, because anytime we talk about drugs and alcohol or substances, there is so much we have to say kind of in preparation in a way before we get down to talk about the actual substances. So that's kind of what you're going to read in your module notes, uh, your lecture notes. And let me just kind of summarize um, a few ideas here. So number one, uh, we live in a culture and a society where substances are all around us, okay? We live in a substance-friendly um, society. Uh, the media, movies, families, every, every aspect of, of our society, college, athletic events, sometimes even religious services and ceremonies, family gatherings, uh, social gatherings, weekends, you know, when people are relaxing on the lake, oftentimes substances are involved and we sort of live in a drug and alcohol friendly kind of world, right? And I want to kind of, so so this class kind of fits then. I mean, all of us, all of us are familiar and have been touched at different levels with substances in our world, right? And so we kind of live in a world today where it's all, it's all around us. That's not a bad thing per se. Uh, this is a human services class and we're going to kind of focus probably more on the reality that people do at times struggle with substances, but that's not always true. I'll, I'll talk more about that in just a second. So we kind of live in a world today where all of us are familiar. You could be living under, a, unless you've been living under a rock, uh, you could be a hermit, right? But as long as you have access to the internet and other people and television, well, then you're familiar with drugs and alcohol. And one of the things I talk a little bit about in the first part of the module are just some basic definitions. And here's kind of a key one. Um, this this class used to be called many years ago, Introduction to Alcohol and Other Drugs. And about three or four years ago, the state changed the name to Substance Related and Addictive Disorders. It took the word drugs and alcohol out. It put the word substance in. And for those of you who are LCDC students, um, we kind of live in a world today, you might be familiar with this, where we really have begun to use the word substance or substances in, in, in place of drugs and alcohol. And we do that for this reason. Many people associate the term drugs and alcohol with illicit, um, illegal, dangerous substances that I would never touch, right? You know, they may smoke a cigarette, but tobacco is not a drug. You know, they may drink wine, but alcohol is not a drug. They may take pain pills or sleep medication, but those aren't drugs. Those are medicines. Those are whatever, right? Well, all of those that I just mentioned 
have the potential to alter our consciousness. All those substances have the potential to alter our consciousness, to affect our emotions, and potentially you and I then can become dependent or addicted upon them. So they're all substances. And, and that's really what we're sort of talking about in this class. It's not just alcohol and certain drugs like cocaine, marijuana, right? We're also talking about tobacco and caffeine. We're talking about over-the-counter medications and prescription medications and pain pills and those and those kinds of things, right? And so the term substance is an important term. It's a more broad term. It's a term that doesn't have as much negative connotation to it. And again, if you work in the drug and alcohol counseling field for very, very long, you'll, you'll find that many, many people, one of the first things you have to work with people on if you're an addictions counselor, it's helping people to realize and to admit that they have a problem and that they, have a, that they, that they are addicted or dependent upon something. And many people will rationalize and say, no, no, I'm not really, I'm not like addicted to this. I just like to drink a lot so I can go to sleep at night, right? Or I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a drug problem. You know, I just kind of get high after school every day. And, you know, my, my buddies and I hang around, we get high. And if I don't get high, I have like a panic attack, but I'm not like a drug addict or anything, right? And so we sometimes people classify in their minds certain substances, you know, only illicit substances. Those are drugs. But everything else is not a drug. Well, they're, they're all substances. So the term substance is an important term that we use today in sort of in place of drugs and alcohol, although they're kind of synonymous in a way. So that's an important definition. I, I gave you some other definitions that I want you to look at um, as well, too. I also highlight for let me mention these two. I also highlight for you, too, just these four basic truths. And we're going to talk some more about this in next week's module as well, too, as we talk about some of the problems that we can see in our culture and society as it relates to drugs and alcohol. But so I, I just, just real quickly, let me review these four basic truths that I give to you uh, in our lecture notes as well, too. Number one, all of us are substance users. We could also use the word drug. All of us are drug users. Really, what we are is all of us are substance users. All of us have taken or we're currently taking medicine. Many of you in the room smoke tobacco, or you may smoke marijuana. Many of you in the room, many of us in the class, you drink alcohol or beer or whatever it may be. But if you're in the room and you have ever, or you're currently taking a prescription medication, you're, you are a substance user. All of us are substance users, okay? Applies to all of us. Many times we come into a class like this and we say, well, not me. I don't, I don't do drugs. I mean, this, this, is, this class is about other people. This class is about every single one of us, potentially, right? So we're all substance users. Number two, the second key idea I give you some more information on is the idea that in many, in most cases, substances are neutral. They don't always cause problems for every single person. Uh, it really, really, the, what's important about substances is, is how we use them, when, where, and why. Oftentimes, right? So, so, so substances are really neutral. And they don't cause problems for every single person. Now, next week, we're going to talk more about the idea of the issues of some of the problems that we do see and that we do know people can, can struggle with in their lives because of certain substances. We'll talk more about that next week. But second, kind of the second key idea is just the neutrality of substances. In and of themselves, most substances are not evil or negative by nature per se. Really, when they become dangerous is when you and I abuse them or take them in ways in which it's not healthy or how they're intended. That's the second key idea. Third key idea, kind of close to that, third key truth is the idea of context and the idea that the context in which someone is using a substance is important. Um, how much, for how long, how often, for what reason? Those questions are really important when it comes to substance use. Who is the one taking the substance? What is the substance? How often, for how long, and why? All of those pieces of a puzzle have to come together to help us to understand whether or not the substance use is appropriate, neutral, dangerous, illegal, wrong, something we're concerned about, whatever it may be, right? So context, context is always important. Uh, many, many years ago, I had a student who came to me and she said, she, I won't go into all the detail, but she said uh, she was concerned that her son, who was a teenager, had a substance abuse problem. And I said, okay, tell me. And the more we talked, she was being really vague about what exactly she told me the substance that he was, she thought he was experimenting with. And I just need to ask, I said, well, let me ask you these questions. You know, when, how, do you know how much, how long, why, when, for what reason, right? And the more and, and the more we get, I needed that information 
tell me to determine whether or not this was just basic experimentation or whether a dependence had or an addiction had begun to develop. All those, that, that, that has to do with what we call context is really, really important. Last thing, last key truth, this is the fourth one, is just this. Uh, the same substance can have different effects on different people. So the same substance can have different, different effects on different people. You know, there are millions, millions of people who drink alcohol regularly and they never abuse it. And they, they, they never, maybe as a younger person, they got intoxicated every once in a while. And maybe on New Year's Eve, occasionally they made every once in a while. But, you know, their drinking is almost always in moderation. And they drink socially or they drink after work or whatever. And, and, and for millions of people, alcohol really is not a problem for them. But we know that alcohol is a can and is a problem for millions of other people. And so the effect that a substance has within someone's body can vary from person to person to person. As I heard an alcoholic say many, many years ago, my problem is that when alcohol gets in my body, my body doesn't handle it like normal, like a normal person. My brain doesn't handle it like a normal person. He said, because the way my body is wired, by the way my metabolism, the way my alcoholic brain works, you know, when, when alcohol hits my body, when it goes into my body, my body does not react like a normal person. He said, I'm an alcoholic. And he said, my brain does not respond the same way. He said, some people can drink and it has, it doesn't have the kind of effect on them that it does on me physically, physiologically, emotionally, psychologically. So same substance, different impacts on different people. That kind of fits with this idea that the context is always important. So that's in, those are just basic, important, just basic, basic, basic truths about around substances and, and, um, drugs and alcohol and those kind of things. I also want to do this. Let me, let me just kind of um, highlight for you, if I can, just uh, these. This is also important too. I highlight for you in the lecture notes, eight common motivations for people using or ingesting or using a substance, we'll say. Eight common reasons why are motivations. And oftentimes there's an overlap between these. And this is important. It's important to realize that people can use a substance or use a drug or drink alcohol or whatever for different reasons. There are often different factors that are often at play. None of them in and of itself is necessarily unhealthy or wrong. They can be, they can get out of control and they can be, they can affect us in negative ways. But let me just kind of review these with you. Um, so number one, most often, very often, whatever substance I may be taking, it fills a need in my life, whatever that is. It makes me feel good. It it takes my boredom away. It takes my physical pain away. It takes my emotional pain away. It gives me a sense of euphoria. Maybe um, the only time I really smoke is when I go out to the smoking table. And I'm around my coworkers. There's the social need that it fills. Um, maybe it's the, maybe it's a way. It helps me just to feel a sense of numbness or feel a sense of power or or whatever it may be, usually substances fill a need, psychological, emotional, behavioral, maybe even spiritual in some ways. So substances often fill a need. Second thing is not always, but often people are motivated to use a substance because it affects their emotions. It alters their consciousness, helps them to sleep better, helps them to feel better, helps them to feel less pain. So this idea that many people are drawn to substances because of the idea of it. it helps me to alter my consciousness. You've heard of people talking about at the end of a long day going and drinking a glass of wine. Well, most often that can be because the wine tastes good. Most often though, when someone has to have a glass of wine at the end of a long day, it's because of what the wine does to them physically and emotionally. It helps them to relax and feel a sense of calm and peace and that warm feeling or whatever it may be, a sense of just kind of putting the day behind me. Usually it's not because I just love the taste of it. No, it fills a need and usually it helps to alter my body, my brain a little bit to help me deal with the stress of the day. It's a release. It's a relaxation, whatever it may be, alters consciousness. Sometimes people, third uh, potential uh, motivation is people sometimes will, will use substances as a way of expressing their independence or to experiment or to rebel, especially with teenagers. We see this. You can't tell me I'm not going to, so I'm going to. Um, I grew up in a home where uh, my parents, both of my grandfathers were alcoholics and died before I was born. So my mother and father 
had a very hard line, a hard line against alcohol in my home. I grew up in a home where there was no alcohol present because my parents were, were, my parents both grew up in an alcohol and alcoholic homes. They did not want that for their kids. So they were anti-alcohol. I have two older brothers and both of my brothers began to experiment with alcohol. Interestingly, early, like 13, 14 years old, they were sneaking out and sneaking into the alley behind our home and drinking beer with the kids down the alley. Part of why they did that wasn't because they loved the taste of beer. It was a way for them, one of the things, to kind of rebel against my mom and my dad saying, you're never going to do that. That's never going to happen in my house. Well, both my brothers, that's kind of their personality. They were like, I'll show you, right? And so, and one of my brothers, unfortunately, struggled with alcohol ism really for much of his adult life. By the time he was 19 years old, was already had already gone into a treatment program for alcoholism as a 19 year old. He started drinking as like a 13 or 14 year old in the alley behind my home. And, and he did, and, and, and part of why he really was drawn to that was probably not, that's my parents' fault was it was his way of saying, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to, I'm going to feel older. I'm going to rebel. I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of, I'm going to sort of experiment here because this sort of is, is enticing to me because of that very, very reason. So many people sometimes get in trouble and begin to experiment with substances, you know, because it's kind of an experimentation, rebellion, independence kind of thing. Uh, we talk about this idea. I talk about in the lecture notes, the idea of social forces, the fact that the media and and uh, movies sometimes and just the world in which we live in sports events. If we're into sports, you know, we sort of are around social situations where alcohol is oftentimes present and it's oftentimes a way for us to socialize and connect with other people. So sometimes social forces or socialization can be a reason why people may be drawn to motivation to use um, certain substances. Sometimes we do what we're told. Many of us are rule followers, right? You might be, you, you know if you're one. Some of us are rule followers. So if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, you need to take this medicine, many of us don't question. And we say, okay. And we go and get it and we just take it. And oftentimes we are under or uninformed as to even what we're taking. Um, if you work in counseling for very long, especially if you work with older adults, un- unfortunately, Many, many older adults today are addicted to pain medicine. And the way they got addicted to pain medicine was because their doctors just kept giving them pain medicine. And their attitude was, well, the doctor told me to take two, so they take two. And I'm not being critical of doctors, but a lot of times we do what we're told. Sleep medication. You know, we're having doc- doctors says, well, take a couple when you need to or, or whatever. And we don't question. We say, okay. And so sometimes we do what we're told, especially with medicine. And, uh, and, and, and if we're not careful, that, that, that can be an introduction for us into substance use or substance problems. Sometimes it will. Other times up here and social, I mentioned socialization, social influences sometimes. Sometimes we grow up in environments where we see um, alcohol or drugs around us, our family gatherings, or maybe we see it as, from a young age. Family influences oftentimes can come into play and influence our motivation for, uh, for substance use as well, too. And again, lastly, the idea that sometimes in certain cases, you and I can develop over a period of time physical and psychological, physiological dependence or addiction on a substance. And a person begins to experience withdrawal symptoms. We'll talk more about that next week. People begin to experience withdrawal symptoms if they don't use the substance if they, if they have if they have a physical tolerance that's been built up and so therefore in order to make those withdrawal symptoms go away they they use that they drink again for example as a way to make the withdrawal symptoms go away because their body needs it so this this idea of physiological psychological dependence is an important issue as well too so those are just examples um, those are just examples of, the, of some common kind of motivations that we see and then here's this last thing, and we're going to talk more about this next week as well, too. The last thing I give to you in your lecture notes, I want you to go and I want you to find, make sure you read the page that talks about the substance use continuum. So the term continuum means like a line, like a, like a line with two arrows on the end of it, right? So like a long, you know, long continuum from here to here. And one of the great things to be introduced to, if you've never thought about this, again, those of you who want to be drug and alcohol counselors, um, it's good to think about substance use in, in the context of what we call a continuum. And there are four pieces of this continuum, and I give you definitions of each one in your lecture notes. There's substance use, misuse, abuse, and dependence. Use, misuse, abuse, dependence, and there's a continuum, right? 
Substance use is what it says it is. That is where someone uses a substance, but they use it in moderation or they use it in the context in which it is intended. So you do not have people using substances or medicines inappropriately. You don't have someone uh, using a substance to the point of intoxication consistently. Someone, someone has control over their behavior and so substance use. Millions of people today for, I use alcohol as an example. Many, millions of people today use or they drink alcohol. They don't misuse it, they don't abuse it, they're not addicted to it. They drink alcohol, substance use. Substance misuse is, is further down the line, it's a little bit more unhealthy. And this is where occasionally I might use a substance in a way to where it is harmful to me or to others occasionally. It can include the occasional intoxication, drinking so much that I occasionally get intoxicated, um, taking someone else's medication that I'm not supposed to, uh, being a teenager and raiding my mother or father's uh, medicine cabinet and taking certain medications or taking two Adderall instead of one uh, or, or because my doctor said, take one, but I take two because a friend of mine said, hey, take two, make you feel real buzzed, right? The occasional misuse of a substance um, from time to time is what we call substance misuse. And so we're concerned when we begin to work with people, we begin to realize they're misusing substances, then we're concerned about that. Substance misuse doesn't always, but often leads to substance abuse. Substance abuse is sort of the next step on the continuum. Substance abuse is where occasional misuse of substances becomes more continual, from occasional to continual. And now we have situations where people, we'll talk more about this a little bit later in this class and including next week, substance abuse or alcohol abuse, if for, I'm, I'm using alcohol as an example because it could be marijuana abuse or cocaine abuse or whatever it may be, is where a person uses a substance in a way to where it begins to impair their judgment and their thinking consistently. And they begin to experience multiple negative effects upon their lives because of the substance use or substance abuse in this case, legal problems, family problems, um, relationship problems, educational problems, that kind of thing. That's what, that's what we call substance abuse. And then substance dependence, another word for the word dependence is the word addiction. Addiction's on the far end of the continuum, right? And so substance addiction or alcohol addiction, for example, is where someone has multiple symptoms uh, uh, including the idea of their life being built around the use of the substance, uh, the presence of withdrawal symptoms when they try to stop or cut back use. There's been continued use for so long, the body has built up tolerance. And so when I stop using, I have these really negative, painful, physiological and psychological withdrawal symptoms. And the only way I can make them go away is to use the substance again. When we see that, that is addiction. That is dependence, usually. Uh, withdrawal intolerance. Uh, the idea of the person cannot live their lives without blank. They begin to rearrange their schedule around their substance use. They're unable to work and have gainful employment. They have, they have a history of broken relationships and legal problems as a result, direct result of their substance a dependent substance use, right? So, so there's this continuum that we see here, right? And so it's important to kind of see the context of substance use in that continuum. Substance use can progress into substance misuse, which can progress into substance abuse, which can progress into substance dependence, right? So it's continuums. It's good. It's it's a good idea to kind of begin to seek substance use in that way. Now that leads us into this. We're going to wrap up our little lecture here in just a second. Um, so next week in module number two, we're going to talk a little bit more about abuse and dependence and the, and, the, and, and the common problems that we see in social services and in our society related to substances and substance abuse and substance dependence. Not everyone, as I just said, not everyone has problems with drugs and alcohol or substances. But we know that many, many people do. And many of you are motivated and you're in, you're in our classes because you want to be a substance abuse counselor, for example. Even if that doesn't apply to you, well, it's good for us just to be aware, you know this already, that there are, there are times and situations and people in our society and our culture that really struggle. Drugs and alcohol can and do pr produce problems for them. We're going to talk more about that next week. Okay, so this week is more general. Go through, after you watch this video, go through, look at all the lecture notes. Read the information in the textbook I've given to you. Do your discussion question. 
do your homework assignment. You got until Tuesday the 8th at 12 noon. Come back next week for module number two. We're going to talk some more about substance abuse and substance dependence. Have a great time. Have a great week. I'll see you next time. Be good.